Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, Paul, you promised never to do a Captivate 8 or Captivate 9 tutorial. And that's right, I did. Um, but this is actually Captivate 2017. But what I'll be showing is how to create a particular interaction uh, that would be compatible with Captivate 8, Captivate 9, or Captivate 2017. But I will be doing it in Captivate 2017. And this is in response to Courtney. Uh, Courtney wrote, Hi Paul, I'm trying to make a click to show feature for my latest course. I have about 10 words and I want the user to click the words and then show the definition. I'm interested in that definition staying up for the rest of the slide and or hiding once the user chooses another term to read. I use the click box feature in Captivate 8, but the success text seems to disappear after a few seconds. Also, it doesn't allow the term to be reselected again. Anyway, if you can think of a different video that might help me for this type of function, it would be very much appreciated. Not sure click box is the way to go. I would tend to agree, Courtney, I think ClickBox is not the way to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bunch of captions. And let's do this. We'll just uh, duplicate that. These will start off. These will be where I put my definitions. And I'm going to try and fit them all on the slide here. How many is that? She said, she said we've got about 10 definitions here. So let me select all of these and uh, we'll group them together. And I'm actually just going to resize them so they fit nicely on my stage, but not take up more than about um, that much room. Okay. So for temporary measure, I'm just going to ungroup these, but I am going to group them again in a moment. And what I'm just going to quickly do here is type in definition one. Uh, this will be two. Okay, so they're all clearly and easily uh, identifiable from one another. And let's give them all names here. So this is going to be, you know what, I'm going to stick with these because they just happen to line up. But uh, a recommended step is to always label your objects so that it makes sense. This just happens to be uh, smart shape seven is definition seven and so on. So just to save time, I'm going to keep them the way they are. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to group all these objects together and you can just hit control G on your keyboard here and that will group them. And I'm going to give this group a name. I'm going to call it definition group so that we can easily identify it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some buttons here. And what are we going to do with these buttons? Now you could use smart shapes used as buttons. Uh, and in this case here, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. Uh, we're going to just call these definition one. And I'm going to take care of a few things here. Um, let's bump up that font just a tad bit. And what else do we need? What else would we want here? Under ag ag actions, I'm going to select hand cursor and disable click sound right off the bat. And that should do me fine. And I'm going to duplicate this. And duplicate both of those. So that I end up with about 10 of these buttons. Uh, again, I'm going to group these. This is my little trick for getting things to fit is if you group them together and resize them all at once. Uh, it tends to help a little bit here. Uh, but in this case, I'm not going to regroup these. I'm going to have them. I mean, I guess I could leave them grouped. That's not a problem. Uh, but there's no reason to, so I won't 
uh, emphasize that as something you have to do. Uh, and let's just, you know what, let's do this. Just so it looks decent. Now, normally I probably wouldn't have all of these definitions in separate locations. I might stack them up on top of one another, uh, but that's fine. In this case here, I'm going to make these not visible in output. And let's just quickly relabel these here so that they are appropriately labeled. This is what I would call the classic show hide situation. And of course, uh, there we go. So um, let's start off. I'm going to select all of my buttons. And I'm going to go to the Actions tab. And I'm going to Execute Advanced Actions. And I'm going to create my first advanced action. and the reason I'm doing it this way is that I can just make some small changes and duplicate each uh, advanced action and make versions for definition two, Jeff, definition three, and so on. So we're going to call this one uh, definition one. And what are we going to do? Well, because we've grouped these all together, the very first thing I want to do is I want to hide them all. So we're going to say group definition group and then we're going to show smart shape one and again I would normally relabel this with something uh, easier but in this case here it just so happened my smart shapes and their numbers lined up perfectly with the individual items that's it that's all I need to do for that so I'm hiding everything and then showing just the one I'm going to save this as an action and I'm going to close this. So there I have execute advanced actions, definition one, infinite attempts. That's important, infinite attempts, because you want people to possibly click on these buttons more than once. Let's go to definition two. I'm going to go to, uh, see it's pointing at definition one, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the advanced action. I'm going to duplicate this action. And we're going to call this one definition two. And the only thing we're going to change is we're going to change that to smart shape two, update the action, click close. And now I'm going to duplicate that. And I'll make sure it's pointing at that new uh, script. And I'm going to duplicate that another um, in this case, eight more times so that I have the full interaction. So again, I'll do it one more just to capture that. We're going to edit this. We're going to duplicate it. Don't forget to hit duplicate because I can't tell you how many times I've edited the existing advanced action and wiped out a bunch of work that I've already done. So now that I have a duplicate, I can call this definition three. Back this up, change that to smart shape three, update the action, click close, and make sure we're pointing at the third one. So I'm going to duplicate that process that I've just done a whole bunch more times for definitions four through ten, and then we'll regroup and see how it works. Okay, so we've got down to definition 10. Just duplicate that once more and just relabel that. And I'll just get rid of all that stuff there and make sure I'm pointing at smart shape 10. Update action. Click OK. Click close. And of course, make sure that you're pointing at the right definition. So there's 10, 9, I'm looking here, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to highlight all of my buttons here. I actually don't need them to pause. 
So I'm going to uncheck that from the timing panel. I generally will only pause buttons that navigate away from a slide. Um, there's a few other reasons why I might, but for the most part, I don't pause um, buttons that are there for the user to interact with something that's on that page itself. So here we are, we're pretty much good to go. I didn't even look at what this looked like for responsive design. I don't know that it would work out well, but um, it certainly will work out for our purposes here just on desktop mode. Let's do a preview of this project and see if this works the way I think it will. And we'll play this project here. This will open up in a browser because it's responsive. So here's our uh, slide here. Let's open up definition one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Works perfectly. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.